It'll be hard to come down from the high that was reaching a national championship game for the first time in school history, but TCU's 2022 Cinderella run is just that history. As for the visiting squad, you might have heard about them this offseason. Coach Prime is in control of Colorado and with 72 new players on this roster, your guess is as good as mine as to what this team looks like. But maybe these guys can offer some perspective. It's Adam Munster Tiger from Buff Stampede and Jeremy Clark of Horned Frog Blitz. Guys, it's uh, it's Dion's first Power Five game. It's most of this roster's first game as a buff. So Adam, what should we be expecting come Saturday? Well, certainly no stage is too big for Deion Sanders. This is somebody that played in Super Bowls and played in the World Series. So as he pointed out, uh, th there's no stage that, that's going to phase him. Uh, I think he's really excited to see Shadur Sanders play at the Power 5 level. And Shiloh Sanders, another son that's playing uh, and expected to start at safety, started out at South Carolina, but Coach Prime, Deion Sanders wasn't coaching his son at that point. So, and there's so many guys on this roster, Dylan Edwards, who's expected to have a big impact as a true freshman that uh, he's known since he was very little because Coach Prime was working the way up from youth football to high school football to Jackson State to now to Colorado. I think uh, uh, he's looking forward to this big stage. And uh, we've even heard that the players might be wearing sunglasses when they hit the field. So uh, he's <laughs> going to make this fun for the players. And I think that. Uh, I think that's great. You know, at the end of the day, college football is a game and, and should be enjoyed. And I think uh, he's really going to embrace that aspect of everything. Yeah, definitely not worried about Dion's ability to handle a big moment. Uh, but Jeremy, I kind of joked how I have no idea what this roster is going to look like. But how is TCU preparing for all of this, you know, all these question marks and unknowns? Uh, a lot of film, a lot of film, Emily. That, that's what we talked uh, to Sonny about this week. And how do you prepare for a team that has an all new coaching staff, uh, new players, 72 new players, as you mentioned, they go, they go back and watch film from other schools. Sonny said that he hadn't even watched one bit of the Colorado game. TCU played uh, them last year. Um, so you go out and you watch Charles Kelly, uh, Kelly, the defensive coordinator at Alabama, what his tendencies were last year for the tide. And then you go and watch Sean Lewis, who was the offensive coordinator at Kent state. But, we joked around with the players. How tough is it to kind of evaluate the players you're going to be going against? And Chandler Morris joked about it earlier this week, saying that he had to watch like 37 different game films just to kind of get an idea of what kind of defensive players he's going to be going against um, with that offense. But yeah, it's, it's going to be a challenge for them. But Jamoy Hodge, Jamoy Hodge made a pretty good point this week uh, in, in the press conference. He said Colorado does this YouTube series where they're following practices. And he said he's been watching a lot of that because He's been able to look at how Colorado players look, the looks at looks at the tendencies, looks uh, at the speed they have. So uh, that YouTube series has uh, been a helpful uh, uh, tool for them to use. And uh, Jamoy even said it might be a little bit too much because they've learned a little bit more than they expected to learn about Colorado. Interesting. See, we love all that access, um, but it seems like it might be a competitive advantage for the other squad. We'll see. I mean, TCU itself, they have their fair share of roster turnover, especially when it comes to some of last year's, their star offensive weapons in particular. So, Jeremy, what's new with the team that we saw at the national championship game last year? A lot of new names. I mean, obviously, you got to replace the Heisman runner up with Max Duggan, Chandler Morris is the guy. I mean, he started last year over Max, got hurt, obviously, against Colorado, missed most of the season. But he's played really well in spring camp, played well in fall camp. They have a lot of expectations for him. And uh, Kendall Browse knows how to use that type of quarterback. They're going to use a lot of RPO. And Kendall Browse has had success with his quarterbacks that he's coached. But I think the the big names are everyone always talks about is Quentin Johnston. How do you replace a first-round receiver? I don't feel like they have that guy yet. Cordell Russell is a very – a uh, young talent. He has a, a lot of uh, high ceiling right now. But if you look at that overall receiver group, I think they're more talented than what they were last year. And you talk to Sonny Docks about that. He'll agree with you. And, and you talk uh, with people around the program. They're going to agree with you. They may not have that Quentin Johnston, but they have three deep at X, four deep at Z. And the slot, the slot receiver room right now is probably one of the more talented groups I've seen since I've been covering TCU. They have a, a lot of speed at that position, a lot of good size. And I look for them to make some big plays this season. You'd be hard pressed to find a college football game on this opening weekend that's going to have more question marks than this football game. Emily, you mentioned all the new players in Colorado's program, basically a brand new roster aside from a couple returning guys. And yeah, on the other side, uh, there's there's so much changeover. As Jeremy pointed out, it seems like depth is a strength for TCU. And so 
if you're Colorado, you do the same thing. You go back and you try to watch as much film as you can. Now, uh, uh, to your bo both your points is there's not uh, well off media that's covering TCU the way that uh, Colorado has put out their product. So uh, it's going to be a little bit more challenging. Uh, but uh, I, I think if you're Colorado with all these new pieces, it's been more about getting yourself to gel than going out there and studying too much because I think there is a paralysis by analysis that can happen when you, you overdo it. Yeah, and it it's just week one, so this is not a finished product, but it's the first time we're going to see what the heck has been happening at Colorado the whole offseason. It's, uh, it's been crazy to track. I'm sure it has from your perspective too, Adam. Um, but of course, the number one transfer portal player is part of the number one transfer portal class, and he is planning on playing on both sides of the ball. I'm super excited to see what this looks like. I mean, Adam, how unique is what we are about to see from Travis Hunter? Well, I've been covering Colorado for 20 years, and I haven't seen the things that he does on both sides of the ball at Colorado. And then they've had cornerbacks drafted early and receivers drafted early, but he is just an unbelievable talent on both sides of the ball. Maybe the best seven on seven player ever. I think you can make that debate. Uh, and the way he does it is so graceful. Even when he hits the turf after a big play, he does it gracefully. He is just such a fluid athlete. And Coach Prime has said that this is a young man that does not get tired. That is going to be tested this fall because they're expecting him to play not just both ways some of the time, but both of the ways most of the time. And so he's not going to play on special teams. They'll hope that he can catch his breath in, in between there. But, uh, yeah, we have, I, I don't think we've seen an, an athlete – to the level of Travis Hunter at both of those positions in a very long time, if ever. Now he's got to go out there and prove it. But uh, even last year, he showed glimpses of that at Jackson State while playing with a really severely sprained ankle. So he's finally healthy. And uh, I'm anxious to see you. You worry about hyping guys up too much mm -hmm. before they played at the Power 5 level, but I'm not worried about with that with Travis Hunter. That's how special and talented he is. I think the best case for TCU right now in defending Travis Hunter is uh, him missing the plane down in Fort Worth. I mean, uh, honestly, the kid is uh, extremely talented. He's uh, obviously one of the top players in the nation already as a true sophomore. Uh, I agree with Adam. I mean, the kid is extremely talented on both sides of the ball. I, I think the best way TCU kind of plans for him the, is what they had in fall camp. They went against those six foot one, six foot two corners. If you're a receiver for TCU, You've gone against the bigger, more physical top corners that they'll see from Travis. And on the flip side, if you're a cornerback for TCU, you got Josh Newton, you got Avery Helm that's going to be challenged, challenging him. Uh, it, it, they've, they've gone against some of those bigger receivers on their own roster, those those 6'3", uh, 6'4", six, six, tops that are also very physical catching the football. But, yeah, I mean, Travis doesn't get tired. He's going to play both ways. He's going to be a focus point for Colorado on both sides of the ball. And uh, as long as TCU can limit his big plays – I think they stand a great chance at winning. All right. We've been talking Travis Hunter all summer and really since he was a high school prospect. So for many, many years, you know that name. But let's hit on some under-the-radar players to watch. Jeremy, start us off. I think if you look on TCU's defense, they have seven guys coming back. But the one guy that really impressed me in spring camp and fall camp was Nandi Obiezor. That's a name that people are going to want to watch this Saturday and really for the rest of the season. He was a safety last year. Uh, they converted him down to linebacker. They love his athleticism. They love his size. He's 6'3", 225 pounds. He can run. He can come up and uh, defend, the, defend the pass. He's a guy that Joe Gillespie looked at. Hey, we've got to find a good replacement for D. Winters. And D. Winters made so many plays last year for that Frogs defense, especially in that Fiesta Bowl. But Nambi Obiezor is a guy that you kind of wondered, is he going to is he gonna hold off guys like Marcel Brooks or Shadrick Banks? And he did a really good job this spring. And, man, he just improved this game in fall camp. And they just couldn't talk uh, enough great things about him right now. And then I'm really excited just to see what he does on Saturday. And I really feel like he's going to be a focal point on that defense this season for the Frogs. For Colorado, the key to this football season is keeping Shadour Sanders healthy. Their backups at the quarterback position are true freshmen or walk-ons. So they don't have a quality number two quarterback. And so for my under-the-radar pick, I'm going to go to the offensive line at left tackle, Jared Christian Lichtenhand, 6'10", 325 pounds. He's nicknamed Tank. And he's one of just three returning starters off that 2022 Colorado football team. And uh, he's going to be a key, saving on Washington at, at right tackle as well. But uh, that's, that's unquestionably... The, the biggest key for this Colorado season. And Jared Christian Lichtenhan has had linear progress since he got on campus as kind of an under-the-radar recruit. He's from a 
smaller town out in Northern California, didn't have a lot of power five options, but has just continued to get better. And from the jump with this new coaching staff, whereas they were weeding out guys, Jared Christian Lichtenhand pretty much ran with the first team at left tackle from practice one of spring ball all the way through their preparation to TCU. Guys, I am so excited for this game. There are so many storylines, uh, but i got to let you go. You already are very generous with your time. Thank you so much. Excited to see your coverage this weekend. If you want to check it out, these are the websites you need to hit up. Buff Stampede for all things Colorado, and there are a lot of things when it comes to Colorado. And then the Horned Frog Blitz, the best site for TCU coverage. Buff Stampede and Horned Frog Blitz. Oh, <laughs>